Hello everyone, I am Nyayapati Gautam, the Center Director of Time Vizag. Today we are going to talk about Section 377. So why are we discussing Section 377 now? Last year in 2018, July of 2018, a five-judge constitution bench headed by the then Chief Justice Deepak Mishra reserved its verdict after hearing stakeholders for four days, including gay rights activists and others. And on September 6, 2018, the Supreme Court, in a landmark judgment, ruled that consensual adult gay sex is not a crime. But what is Section 377 in any case? The actual law, that is IPC Section 377 states, whoever voluntarily has carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man, woman or animal shall be punished with one imprisonment for life or with imprisonment of either description for term which may extend to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine. The law stated something interesting against the order of nature. So to my mind, if this act is against the order of nature, then nowhere in nature should this act be performed. Let me give you a few examples, however. Cichlid fish eggs are fertilized by the male while they are being carried in the female's mouth. Dwarf chimpanzee is one of humanity's closest relatives. You know, the entire species is bisexual. There are various other examples. Lions are homosexual. Male lions usually band together with their brothers to lead the pride. They strengthen the bonds, apparently, by having sex with each other. Homosexuality is also apparently quite common among dolphins and killer whales. And animals that live a completely homosexual life can also be found. Apparently, geese and duck, about 4 to 5 percent of these animals are homosexual. Now that we've spoken of these examples, can we quickly take a look at section 377 again? Whoever voluntarily has carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man, woman or animal. Now, the fact that I've given these examples, of course, some of you may actually point out, like a student had once pointed out in Bangalore, that I'm cherry picking examples. But my response then and my response now is the same. The very fact that I'm able to give even one example shows that this statement against the order of nature is inherently flawed. Now, what's the history behind this? Now, the Delhi High Court on 2nd of July 2009 decriminalized gay sex as provided in Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. And it ruled that sex between two consenting adults in private would not be an offense. The emphasis obviously being on consent, adult and private. Justice Shah, who delivered that verdict, made some very interesting observations. He said that the British who introduced Section 377 in India uh, did so because they feared that their army and their daughters would be tainted by oriental vices. Now, these were the ones who would introduce this section in India, but they had repealed the same in their own country. Their judicial committee, the British Judicial Committee, recommended that for consenting adults, it should not be a crime. And at that time, Justice Shah had remarked that gay sex by consenting adults was not a crime in all of Europe and the US. He made a very interesting point. He spoke about morality and what he said was, what was envisaged in the constitution was not popular morality. Probably public morality is the reflection of the moral normative values of the majority of the population. 
But constitutional morality derives its contents from the values of the constitution. Now, that was a very important statement that he made. Whatever it is, if it is rooted in the beliefs and in the morality of the constitution of that country, then even if 10% or 50% or 75% are against a particular action, but if that action is rooted in constitutional morality, it cannot be ruled to be a crime. So, what the High Court did was, it, was, it read down section 377 so that this criminal provision applied only to non-consensual acts of homosexuality. The court was dealing with a challenge to the constitutionality of the provision which penalizes anybody who voluntarily has carnal intercourse against the order of nature. Now, from the Delhi High Court verdict, we move to the Supreme Court. Now, the bench of Justices Singhvi and S.J. Mukhopadhyay reversed the Delhi High Court judgment's uh, 2009 verdict and held that the 150-year-old Section 377 criminalizing gay sex does not suffer from the vice of unconstitutionality. The bench said, the Supreme Court bench said, in the light of plain meaning and legislative history of the section, we hold that section 377 IPC would apply irrespective of age and consent. It is relevant to mention here, I am quoting them, it is relevant to mention here that section 377 IPC does not criminalize a particular people or identity or orientation. It merely identifies certain acts which, if committed, would constitute an offence. Such prohibition regulates sexual conduct regardless of gender, identity and orientation. Now, what are the past reactions? The spokesperson of the Archdiocese, Father Dominic Emmanuel, said that he disagreed that this law was denying the LGBT community its fundamental rights. They are not denied fundamental rights. In fact, psychiatrists have made clear that this is unnatural. The president of the Indian Psychiatric Society herself said it. So, that was Father Dominic Emmanuel. Mohammad Afzal Rizvi, a Bareilly-based cleric, has issued a fatwa against homosexuality. Such acts could attract severe punishment, he said. A person may be burnt alive, pushed from a high wall or be beaten publicly with stones if he indulges into either of these two behaviors, the fatwa states. Baba Ramdev said the practice of homosexuality is unscientific, unnatural, uncivilized, immoral, irreligious and abnormal. He said he had a cure for homosexuality. I invite them to my ashram. Two people belonging to opposite sex will be kept in one room for a few days and they will be cured of homosexuality. That's what Baba Ramdev said. Now, he also went on to say that homosexuality is not genetic. If our parents were homosexuals, then we would not have been born. So, it's unnatural. So, what was the impact of this? The impact of this clearly were privacy issues. And blanket criminalization of LGBT persons makes it harder to reach out to them for AIDS treatment. And clearly, there are issues in terms of concerns of heterosexual couples. Thank you very much.